Today is day two of our Black at Private Education and Race series, where Vlad and I take a closer look at a social media movement that began over the summer. Students and alumni of elite New York City private schools created social media accounts to expose some of the racist encounters they experience every day. And I spoke to filmmakers Joe Brewster and Michelle Stevenson. Not only do they have a son who attended the prestigious Dalton School, but they followed him for 12 years as he navigated his way through the predominantly white institution and made a documentary about it. Here's what they had to say. Tell me what compelled you to make this doc because you weren't just making it, you were living it at the time. Naivete. Uh, <laughs> we, we didn't know the effort it would take uh, to complete this work, uh, the intensity of the work, the impact it was going to have on uh, the characters, and we didn't even know we were going to be those characters uh, until half seven years in. And so the the thing is that we wanted to make a documentary uh, where we could work during the day, uh, our day jobs, and continue our work as uh, filmmakers, and also have a a relationship with our our family. So there was a, a family affair. Yeah, family affair, but also as filmmakers and storytellers in documentary, one of the most prized things is access, right? Mm -hmm. So what better way to have access than to really do a film that looks in within the family, but also with friends? Yeah, so the audience um, gets to watch your son and his friend really grow up before their eyes, right? Going to the, this uh, elite um, school in New York. Um, you know, we are still finding it very difficult to grapple with the, the subject of race. And that is one of the things that your documentary looks at within the private school setting, that this is a school that wants to diversify, as they say, um, their, um, the kids in the school, but merely sending, they want to diversify the kids in the school, but the extent of that commitment becomes a little bit blurry. What were some of the tough things that you discovered when you realized you had this great opportunity to send your kid to this top-notch school, but? I think part of the thing has to do with how our, my son and his friend were perceived. Hmm. So there's the bias of perception that we were confronting and that became bigger and bigger obstacles along the way. Hmm. And ultimately understanding that diversity is not enough Diversity is actually a hollow word. We're talking more about justice and equity. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's continuing to be used right now. And I think it's dangerous to go down that route. So the question is, a lot of it has to do with, not with goodwill. We understand goodwill and intentions. But we are suffering from the legacy of 400 years of slavery and institutionalized racism. Bringing people in or bringing students in is just a first step. There has to be a deeper analysis. And I think there were some growing pains for Dalton to realize that as well, the school. Mm -hmm. So let me pull back a second, because uh, ultimately we made this film and we didn't know what we were making. We were making a personal film about our son and our family. Okay. Uh, this is a film about race, but it's also a film that captures a segment of systemic racism. Mm -hmm. And so the, even when you talk about public school, uh, private school kids, you, you have to understand that these private school kids are maybe 10% of the nation's kids. The overwhelming majority of, of kids go to public school and the, their fate educationally in terms of how education, systemic racism, uh, affects their lives and their families' lives is even more significant. Mm -hmm. So we're just capturing a part of a bigger story. And the bigger story is a lack of, of uh, access uh, and the obstacles that, that people of color face a, a, every day. So even when we come up with, with solutions for how do we educate our son in this private school environment, We've, we've missed some key factors. How do they get to that school? Mm -hmm. How do they deal with the, what the television is telling about 
them about themselves. Mm -hmm. Right, but I think even as important is what are the teachers? What are the faculty? What are the administrators bringing into the space that is affecting, that is affecting the longer term success of, of our children? Yeah, I think those are really, really good observations. You know, we're talking about the Black at movement, which is, you know, former Black students that, that went to, you know, elite schools and how they felt about that experience. But, you know, often when I hear them talk, I think, geez, I kind of lived through that kind of stuff. And I went to like a public school system. I didn't have very many teachers of color. Um, I didn't, you know, it was sort of the cursory uh, February delving into Black History Month sort of stuff. Two of our Black at Private Education and Race series, where Vlad and I take a closer look at a social media movement that began over the summer. Students and alumni of elite New York City private schools created social media accounts to expose some of the racist encounters they experience every day. And I spoke to filmmakers Joe Brewster and Michelle Stevenson. Not only do they have a son who attended the prestigious Dalton School, but they followed him for 12 years as he navigated his way through the predominantly white institution and made a documentary about it. Here's what they had to say. Tell me what compelled you to make this doc because you weren't just making it, you were living it at the time. Naivete. <laughs> uh, we, we didn't know the effort it would take uh, to complete this work, uh, the intensity of the work, the impact it was going to have on uh, the characters, mm -hmm. the families, is that you have to think critically. There is no yes or no answer. There is no easy answer. You have to know your child. Mm -hmm. You have to know the community that he lives in and the values of that school you're placing him in. Uh, I, I think that what we want out of the process is a high level of educational achievement, but we want someone who's socially and uh, emotionally stable. Mm -hmm. So for example, with our second son, we realized that placing him in that environment would be traumatic for him. So we kept him in an environment where we were sure that he knew himself, self, he knew where his family was from, he knew probably uh, American history, uh, and African American history is American history, probably better than his peers and better than some of the, uh, 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 the teachers. So he was able to advocate for himself in a way that our eldest son uh, could not when he didn't see himself in the history book. When, when he was told by a classmate that your people have never contributed anything significantly to this culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so what I'm saying is that we, we're looking for uh, the package. What we do know is uh, at these elite private schools, uh, they leave those schools uh, in terms of their uh, uh, math skills, writing schools on a college level. Uh, and so that's, that's valuable. But if you, you, you have a son or a daughter, and there, there's a lot of evidence that daughters are struggling in this situation even more so than the sons, or as much as, as the sons. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you want them to have a sense of self-worth when they go out in the world to use those skills. Yeah, I mean, I think it really is about each individual, as Joe said, individual parent and family. But the one thing that we do need to understand is whatever environment um, we find ourselves in, per parent advocacy is the key to the success of the child. But I think that that is a really high barrier for, uh, for families. Because um, how do we advocate? It requires time, it requires money, it requires access, it requires being heard. And so there's that whole other level of structural, of structural racism that exists, even for the parent, even if they would want to advocate. And I think you find that in the public school the same way you find that also in the private school, of course, with its own different manifestation. So yes, sure. I think when you leave a, when you leave these institutions, the the, the skill set required for college prep is because you know that's what you're, that's what you're supposed to be doing there, preparing for college. So you do leave sort of with that edge. Um, public schools have you know there are so many they're so diverse and different in terms of their focus, but they also require parental parental involvement.
And I think that um, it's unfair. It's unfair. We have an educational system across the country, whether it's private or public, that is uh, uh, essentially inequitable. And the question is, how do we address those institutional inequities? So that as a parent, I don't necessarily feel like I have that burden responsibility. I'm already providing for my child that I also have to be in the school to make sure that they're being treated properly, that they're getting the basics and that they're being treated as whole human beings in whatever environment is a really high task to ask parents. Mm -hmm. um, you made your doc um, seven years ago. Now you see the Black Act movement, these young people speaking out. I wanna get your take on what you're hearing from them and how you, what you feel about the movement. Well, I feel that I'm, I'm, I'm very proud <laughs> and happy and, uh, it, you know, to see that we have, there has been some level of evolution over the last seven years. And the evolution hasn't necessarily come from the institutions, it's come through the student body. And maybe it is the students talking with their parents, the students being exposed to certain things to feel that they are ready to, to express what they perhaps were not as comfortable expressing in the past, and that this pressure is essential. I've also seen that some of the demands that exist, and those demands have been around for years, if not decades, whether it's about faculty diversity, changing the curriculum, this is something that has been around for a while, that has been tossed around, but I think with the presence of social media and bringing that pressure to bear on social media, maybe we will see some structural shift today, but I'm very excited to see these voices kind of being raised. So, so let me uh, uh, point to something I think is, is, is significantly different than 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I remember we were making uh, American Promise and we were doing the, the press rounds. And every time we mentioned the word white supremacy, it was a whisper. These kids don't whisper that and they can articulate how it impacts their life on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So the, the number of people, we reached a critical mass of people saying, you know, why do I have to understand this history from one particular gaze when there are 40 others that are equally uh, significant and have contributed to this country the way it is? Why do we have to be surprising to find out at every level of American uh, promise Somebody of color was in the room, might have been at the back of the room, might have been on the side of the room, but we've been uh, a critical part of every level of, of uh, history that we, we have and, and, and throughout the world. So these kids are not shy about that. And I, and I think some of the groundwork was laid obviously hundreds of years ago, but more recently with, uh, uh, cultural studies, African studies, Latino studies. Oh, what did they discover? We were in the room, yeah. that we were significant, mm -hmm. that we can be leaders. We can we have been leaders. And, and, and so that is what my son knows that I didn't know. I didn't have to, I had to invent that. I had to study that. Mm -hmm. He's been given that gift. And when the teacher asked him a question, uh, he can, with pride, talk about the Haitian influence on the development of the United States. Uh, he can talk about uh, the fact that Europe was built on on the on the backs of, of slaves, uh, and 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 he can he can defend that. Uh, I think we have an understanding of who we are. And I think one of the things that we suffer with now is uh, a lack of understanding whiteness. And so mm -hmm. it is seen as something. Yeah, I think we are at a crossroads right now. We are at a reckoning. Because I think uh, these voices that we're hearing is a result of movement building, as you're saying, that's come from many generations to come. Now the ball is in the court of the institutions. Mm -hmm. Where will they go? Where and how far will they respond? And then we'll kind of know at that point, you know, what the next step needs to be, you know. Uh, their documentary is called American Promise. 
fascinating documentary. The Dalton School has responded to CBS News. Uh, in a partial statement, a spokesperson said, quote, Dalton is committed to combating racism and we are holding ourselves accountable. We will continue to actively listen and adapt our policies and our programs to better live up to our stated values as a visibly, vocally, structurally anti-racist institution. You can see the full statement at cbsnews.com slash race in schools.